Hi there and nice you're watching. Today I will be showing some pages of my brand new art journal and you see we're home again for about a month or so. So I have students again weekly, art journal students, so I will also show you their results. This week's assignment was about seeing things in the background and I will challenge you to see some things in my pages too. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss a thing next time. And leave a comment, I will ask you a hidden question, so stay tuned until the end of the video. Sometimes you have a page in your book and it looks like it completely failed and that was the case with this one and it was a happy accident in the end. So on this spread you can see um, a bluish background and what happened with the bluish background were two kind of accidental things and this was very watery paint and then I closed the page and the pattern of the burlap was coming was stamped on this page so you see a pattern and you see the texture of the burlap coming but what also happened was this was damaged paper so it was clinging to that page um, I put some paper um, upon it because there was still some white paper here. You can also see it here in this upper left corner. It's same like what's underneath this one but here a piece of the paper was just gone and I was looking at it and firstly I wanted to put a new layer of bluish paint above it but then I thought I see a cat in it. So this was meant to be a cat. I overlapped it with a new color and what I wanted to do with this page is combining all kinds of prints and patterns together and I worked several times on it. It wasn't finished right away in, in one session. I, I think I needed three or four sessions for it to, to keep it this way. And once I know my theme, the thing I see in the background, like the cat, then I can continue working on that page. I found this uh, jelly print, which I created, I think this spring, and I thought it would be wonderful matching with this blue background. And I did some intuitive writing and it was about silence. And when you are completely silent, you can still hear the purring of the cat and then I thought the purr, the purring would be a nice pattern too so this text goes just like purr, 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 until the end but it's all also a hidden pattern in it so the the letters P and R are the pattern of this piece yeah and then I created some patterns with new tools that I had and that's these neocolor pastels. I have gold and I think I had the paints gray to create these ones and these lines. I also used a white, I think a white Posca pen. And these ones are templates that I just mixed. I don't want a template to be too dominant and too outstanding for a page. And this is the same. That's an airplane, it doesn't sound nice, but we are living close to the Amsterdam Schiphol airport. So I think the wind is turned, uh, so we hear airplanes quite often. This is also an old jelly print made on craft paper, craft package paper. And I thought it would be matching the page and the burlap of this. This is a um, piece of the template I used here too. So I let things come back on each page. And this was a face I saw in the background. So the theme of this video is 
seeing things in the background and sometimes that's accidentally happening just like the cat but sometimes I'm just making a background and I already see a face I think here was a piece of paper and I saw the nose and, and a little eye shape and then I continued working on the face so it's nice if you listen to what the pages are telling you and Sometimes I'm hanging on to a plan too long and then the page, well, maybe, well, a lot of times it fails then and I ha just have to follow my intuition and go on with the things that I love to do. And then suddenly I see it and sometimes it's good to take a distance and to, to just leave it for a while and then continue with another page and then come back to it later. So on the next page, I really came into the flow and I wanted to combine some patterns and I wanted to, wanted to do something that I did earlier, creating nice flowers with specific colors, brown, uh, grayish, creamy, um, grayish blue. And this one was also very funny. I had a placemat underneath my book and just rolled over it with the brayer. And then this effect came up that I wanted to use some gold. And now it's looking like a panther print or something. It wasn't my intention at all, but I thought it was really nice uh, with these flowers. I also used my neopastel um oil pastel things so that's also nice and this is a piece of fabric that Machtel gave to me and I use it very often I really love it and I wanted to let this col these colors I wanted to return it here a little bit but not too much I wanted to explore mixing patterns and that continues here on the next spread this is actually a cutout I cut out half of the page and then you turn a page and then you see this and it's matching this panther print again and I'm again into patterns and uh, there's one pattern that I didn't create myself and that's this one it's coming from a newspaper there was a fair with uh, race horses and here were the horses and these are just the shadows of the trees and I thought it would be wonderful if I used this one in this page because the colors were like well, grayish, bluish shades. Uh, it was I thought it would be good. And this page is a little prelude to what comes next. These mini collages I created in France while giving the retreat, but they didn't fit in the book that I had with me. So I kept them for this larger art journal. So this project I've been working on at Rev, and that was our place where we hold, where we held the retreat. And this is one of the cards that I created the mini collage. But these collage, uh, collage, mini collages didn't fit in this tiny book that I only had with me those days. So I thought it would be nice to, to keep it, to keep them, to put them in my new art journal at home. I had some troubles finding them all back because I just found 10 of those. I created one extra because one of those I put in the book this one was, wasn't really matching color-wise, so I, I made some new, I think this is the new one. And then Anthony uh, was doing some decluttering in the camper and he found these two uh, underneath the chair, um, or behind the chair, I don't know exactly where, but um, then this project was complete and I always love it to have a continuing story and not suddenly a blank page some people work randomly through the book I don't do that so I am happy to have these ones in my book it's really 
nice to work on uh, such pro project, uh, I can recommend it to you. Just uh, make some small pieces of paper, cut them in the same size or almost the same size and start working on a random color palette that you that you love to work with. And I, you see, I used more colors than I usually do. So for example, I added these sunflowers twice and some elements I add twice, like the gold and the blue thing, it's also here. Um, the dark sky is also here. This is a little damaged, so I have to repair that. These eggshells were really, uh, kind of an inspiration to uh, use the, the, the minty like the mint like green here and here it's it's I think blue and and light green this kind of green are the dominant colors so it's good to choose a dominant color and then add some colors well for example pink I just have a few pink elements like the thread here the flower here um, where else here a little pink here is another thread another some tiny flowers that i dried so you could use anything but be aware that you let um that you um let co some colors come back throughout the collage and then it's um the question where you can place them and what will be the composition if you have them all together so um i i just um was aware of some things are uh, horizontal, some things were a round shape, uh, some things were an overall composition. Uh, I don't have that, but many students had that. Uh, but mine are some landscapes, some vertical compositions like these and these. Um, so it's just a mix up uh, of things and you could do all kind of things, just patterns all over the place. You could even add faces. Some people added faces, but if you want to see what the other people created, you can watch my full video about the retreat. Let's go to the page that I've been creating for this week's assignment. So for the assignment, we had to see something in the background and just making a background, as I already told you, can sometimes bring you to the most strange things. In others work, other people's work, we saw, for example, lions, cats, faces, flowers, clouds, a man with a moustache. And it's not that you have to do something with what you see in the background. Uh, some, some things you can just leave and let go and you make a choice uh, of what you want to use. It really helped us. Um, some people were having challenges with seeing something at all. So what we've done during the lesson, uh, we put all the books on the table and I l left a little piece of paper with a pen and then everyone could look at each other's book and write down what she saw. I only have women. So what she saw, she wrote down on a piece of paper and the person could decide whether it was usable or not. So there were a lot of cool things coming out of that, like I said before. And in my case, on this page, you see flowery shapes and that was in the first place what I saw. It was also a very textural page uh, as I printed the palette right on the page. So there was a lot of texture, it was wet, so uh, I was helping the students and teaching. So I left my page and after the lesson I worked on it. And firstly there were all flowers here like like they are here too. I mirrored the page, so I stamped it like this, and then I had the same like flowers, but it was a bit like the flowers that I had already on this page. And I didn't want to uh, to repeat myself, so I, I just 
wanted to do it a bit differently. And also you see these little stalks and I wanted to use those for another kind of flower, not the big ones that are screaming here on this page. This one had to be silent and I wanted to have, well, a nice composition with patterns. And then I thought I had a flower workshop and somebody, Tamara, brought these flowers with her. And these are called Stars of Bethlehem. Uh, you see, they are five-pointed stars with a little heart. And I really loved drawing them. And I wanted to add these flowers to this page. Now I will show you the students' results. And it's lovely what they've been creating. And stay tuned because I have also a question for you. This is the very first page of my art journal and we will go to the question to you, the hidden question of this video. What do you see in the background? So this is the first page of my book and I changed it a couple of times. I started on this page before we went to France and I think I even done, uh, I've even done a tutorial on jelly printing. So some things are still visible from that. These shapes are from the jelly printing thing. But when I came home, I was struggling because it was the first page and because I just went home and I, I didn't know what to do exactly with this page. This page still doesn't have a theme, although I added these uh, dried, uh, it's not a flower, it's kind of a seed thing. A friend of mine found it in a, a ditch. They grow there. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's really wonderful to use those. And this is a leaf that I found when I was having a meeting in the park with this same friend. So that's really nice to have her in this page. Uh, I also added a pattern. Uh, so there are some things already, well, coming up, but I don't have a conclusion what it will be, uh, what it will be like in the end. Uh, so there must be something and I wanted to ask you what do you see in this page and if you see something please let me know maybe I will add it maybe I will just mention it the next time and I will definitely show what I'll be doing with this page in one of the next videos and I've also been wondering what this book will be called because Mostly I have a theme throughout a book. Uh, one of the books that I created is called Inspired by Nature. Uh, one book, a book is called Home because I was home all the time when I worked on a book. But now I don't know. I don't, nature is always coming back and I'm home as well. So it could be again home, home too, or nature too, but I find that a little boring. So I was wondering, maybe you could help me find a name for this art journal. Uh, so far we have these pages like this one. And maybe I'm, I'm thinking about to, to call it composition because I'm very, uh, I'm exploring new compositions all the time or patterns or something it can be also very abstractly so i don't know yet what this book will be called 
if you have any good idea please share it with me yeah i'm curious if you have themes for yourself for a particular art journal that was it for this week i hope you enjoyed this video please let me know your answer to the hidden question in the comments below it really helps supporting our channel and also if you like subscribe and turn on the notification bell to see all of our next videos. I see you next time. Bye bye.